Hi. I have a cat gently purring next to me. He's actually behind the camera right now. I don't know if you can hear that. Siggy, what are you doing? I have nothing else to say. Here are 10 Japanese books coming out in 2022 and what you need to know about them and why you should be excited. Oh my God, you are such a problem. <laughs> He's a problem. He's heavy. Go do something. I only have one of these books to hand because it's coming out in a few days time at the time of recording. And that is this. Do you know, this might be out today the day that this video goes up. This is a newly translated collection of three short stories by Junichiro Tanizaki. Junichiro Tanizaki was one of the biggest names in Japanese literature of the 20th century. His books are massive, they are influential, and they're really beautiful. Three that spring to mind are Some Prefer Nettles, The Makioka Sisters, and A Cat, A Man, and Two Women. Junichiro Tanazaki is a really big deal, and now we have three more of his stories available in this book, which comes out on the 3rd of January. This was co-translated by Anthony Chambers and Paul McCarthy, and as you can see, I'm currently reading it. I have read two of the three stories, and it is a really beautiful meditation on ordinary life, which is a very, very vague thing to say, but I am going to do a full review that'll come out shortly after this video, so... Stick around for that. They're somber, and in some ways, they just kind of make you sad, but not in a sad way. Melancholy? Maybe that's the word. Anyway. Next is a book that I'm particularly excited for that's coming out in February, and it is Woman Running in the Mountains by Yuko Tsushima. She wrote Territory of Light, which is a novel that I really, really enjoyed, but found, again, very somber and melancholy. Territory of Light was a book about a young single mother, newly divorced and trying to find her own way in the world, and the titular Territory of Light is her apartment, which has a lot of light coming into it. It's a new apartment that she's moved into, and the book documents her life over the course of a single year after having moved into this apartment, newly alone, newly single. And Woman Running in the Mountains seems to be very, very similar. It's published by MYRB Classics, and it is translated by Geraldine Harcourt, who also translated Territory of Light, I believe. And this is also, according to the blurb, a young woman, single mother, trying to find her way in the world, set in 1970s Japan. I'm really intrigued. If it's anything like Territory of Light, I'm going to really, really enjoy this. And I love the title, Woman Running in the Mountains. It's a great name. Yoko Tawada is a name you might be familiar with. She's a pretty big deal in terms of Japanese literature right now, although she actually lives in Berlin, and I believe she also writes in German. She wrote The Last Children of Tokyo and Memoirs of a Polar Bear, and I think at least one of those was actually written in German. I'm not sure. The Last Children of Tokyo is a science fiction-ish, dystopian-ish novel about the near future and what mostly pollution is going to end up doing to the world. Her new book, which is called Scattered All Over the Earth, is tackling a very similar topic. This one is about climate refugees. It's translated by Margaret Mitsutani. It's coming out in the US in March, and I think it's coming out in the UK sometime in the summer. By Granta? I think it's Granta. This one tells the story of a young woman who was originally from Japan, but Japan has been swallowed up by the ocean thanks to climate change. And she now lives in Denmark, and she teaches other climate refugees who've ended up in Scandinavia a new language that she's kind of invented. And I guess that language is to get everyone communicating on some level. That's all I know about the book, but it is obviously very, very timely and poignant right now. It's probably going to be a very difficult book to read, but I look forward to it. I liked The Last Children of Tokyo. I am pretty excited to see what she can do with, I guess, what you call an eco-novel. Over the last few years, there have been two Japanese women writers that have quickly become my two favourite Japanese writers ever. And they have both released two novels in English translation, and they both have books coming out again in 2022, which means that it's going to be another good year. One of those authors is Mieko Kawakami. She wrote Breasts and Eggs, which was my favourite book of 2020 and Heaven, which was one of my favourite books of 2021. In 2022, we are getting, once again translated by Sam Bett and David Boyd, All the Lovers in the Night. I don't know anything about this book, but I know someone who has already read and reviewed it because they got 
an early galley copy or something. And they said that this book is very, very similar to book two of Breasts and Eggs in terms of its character, its plot, and what happens within it. And that's it. That's all I know. I really want to go into this book knowing as little as possible, which means you don't get to know anything either, at least from me. But I know it's coming out in the US and the UK, once again from Europa and Picador, just like the last two books of hers. But I don't know if we have a UK release for it yet. Europa has got their cover and they've got everything sorted out, but I haven't seen anything from Picador about the UK release yet. Well, I want it soon. <laughs> My other favourite Japanese author of all time ever is Sayaka Murata, and she also has a book coming out in 2022, but this is a collection of short stories called Life Ceremony. This is translated by Ginny Taplitakimori, and it's Sayaka Murata. Sayaka Murata has talked about how Convenience Store Woman was quite a safe novel. I don't think those were her exact words, I'm paraphrasing and how she is a very, very punk and shocking author, and we saw that with Earthlings, which is, again, one of my favourite Japanese novels, but certainly not for everyone. I loved it, however, and I'm really hoping that Life Ceremony is going to be as strange, as punk, as hard-hitting, but we'll find out soon. This is a collection of short stories, and it is the first collection of short stories of hers to be translated into English. I am a huge fan and supporter of short story collections. I talked about them a lot on this channel. And the fact that we've now got Sayaka Murata writing a collection of short stories. I mean, this could easily already be my favorite book of 2022 and I haven't even touched it yet. We'll see. A book that I reviewed not too long ago was The Easy Life in Kamusari by Shion Miura. It was translated by Juliet Winters Carpenter and I had a really fun time with it. It didn't make it into my top 10 of the year, but I did really enjoy it. I didn't realize, however, when I reviewed it, that it's actually part of a duology and we're getting the second book this year. This book is called Kamusari Tales Told at Night, which is a bit of a clumsy title, but it's continuing on the narrative that began with the easy life in Kamusari. And I'm really excited to see how this changes things up a little bit. Is it going to have a slightly different tone? Is the protagonist now going to be a little older, a little wiser? Is it a different protagonist? I really don't know. Again, I'd really like to go into this as blind as possible, but I am excited. This is definitely one I'm going to check out and hopefully one that I'll review as well. You calm down now? Yeah? Oh, you precious boy. God, you're heavy though. Oh, you sweet boy. All right, go do something else. Here's one that has me excited for a whole bunch of reasons. This is a book called Fish Swimming in Dappled Sunlight by Riku Onda. It's translated by Alison Watts and it's being published by Bitter Lemon, who are a really, really fantastic publisher. Now this author wrote The Aosawa Murders, which is a murder mystery novel that I have not yet read, but I keep meaning to. I even saw it in my local library recently and I didn't pick it up. This is also a murder mystery, but it's also supposed to be a kind of psychological thriller, and I guess those two genres can easily overlap, and they are here. It's about a couple who have decided to break up, and they are spending one last night together, but during this last night together, they're eager to try to draw a confession out of the other, because their relationship has dissolved after they went on a hike together, and the person who took them on the hike, the, the mountaineer guide person, died. And each person in this relationship thinks the other did it. And so they're kind of at loggerheads trying to get the other to confess. And the book takes place over this single night with them together. I'm really intrigued by this. It sounds very, very tense. And it does sound like a great psychological thriller. I'm really excited. I don't even know how to start talking about this next one. Um, this is amazing. Okay, this, this is really... This is really, really exciting. This is Solo Dance by Lee Kotomi. And this is translated by... <laughs> by one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Arthur Reiji Morris. And I just can't believe this. Arthur and I are very, very dear friends. We met in Tokyo several years ago and Arthur now lives in London and he and I hang out all the time. I, I, I can't, I can't, I cannot. This is so cool. Um, oh man, okay, yeah, this is great. I'm genuinely getting emotional. I'm so happy for him. So this is Arthur's debut as a literary translator and I wish him all the love and success and everything, and oh, he, he's, he's a good friend. But this is also a really, really exciting novel for me to talk about in general, because the author is originally from Taiwan and lives in Japan and writes in Japanese, and Taiwan and Japan are my two favorite countries. Also, she is a queer writer writing about a queer experience, and I'm queer. So this is just a book that is completely all up my alley, right? This is a book about Taiwan and Japan and the relationship between people and corporate culture, the relationship between queer people and ordinary people, 
And it is a Japanese novel by a Taiwanese person translated by one of my best friends. This is everything that I could want. This is such an exciting thing. This last one's really cool. I was just looking it up and it's co-translated by David Boyd and Lucy North, two translators that I have an enormous amount of respect for. And the book also sounds really, really fun. It's called Diary of a Void. Great name. And it's by Emmy Yagi. And it tells the story of a woman who leaves her first job because of sexual harassment, which is a big, big problem everywhere. And she goes to work at this new company and she decides at one point to pretend that she's pregnant. She's the only woman in the office and she decides to tell everyone that she's pregnant in order to avoid some menial labor that she has to do. But she's not pregnant, so we have to see where this takes her. That's it, that's all I know. And I'm really, really intrigued by this. I've never read this author before. It might well be her first novel translated into English. Really, really cool, really strange, and I think it's gonna go into some dark and bleakly comic places, at least judging from the blurb. I have a feeling that wasn't 10. <laughs> Might have been eight or nine. I'm gonna put 10 in the title regardless. Feel free to go back and count and tell me I was wrong. Anyway, look forward to these books. I also realized that as the video went on, I stopped mentioning when these books were coming out and I only sometimes mention the publisher. I'll put all that in the description, okay? Subscribe for books.